I have fought a very family against white domination. I have fought very firmly against black domination. I cherish the idea of a new South Africa where all South Africans are equal. His life has been described as an inspiration in South Africa and throughout the world to all who are oppressed and deprived, a leader who never wavered in his devotion to democracy, equality and learning. Born in 1918, he was given his very English first name, Nelson, by a teacher in school. In 1941, he ran away from an arranged marriage and went to Johannesburg. Mandela joined the African National Congress at the age of 25. He married his first wife, Evelyn, in 1944, the same year he founded the ANC's Youth League. By the time Mandela was 30, blacks and so-called coloureds had officially become second-class citizens in South Africa and were being told where they could live and work. He qualified in law and opened a practice in Johannesburg with his partner Oliver Tambo in 1952. Four years later, Mandela was charged with treason along with 155 other activists, but the charges against him were eventually dropped. He divorced his first wife Evelyn in 1957 and in 1958 he married Winnie, who would later become one of the leading campaigners in the fight to free him from prison. At the end of the 1950s, the ANC largely had a policy of non-violence, but the turning point was Sharpeville, when 69 protesters were shot dead by police during a demonstration in 1960. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence against the government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. A state of emergency was declared and the ANC banned. In 1963, Mandela and other ANC officials were tried for plotting to overthrow the government and the following year he was sentenced to life in prison. During his years in jail, Mandela became a symbol for the struggle against apartheid in South Africa, the most celebrated political prisoner of the time, despite the fact that few knew what he really looked like. In 1990, the new president, F.W. de Klerk, lifted the ban on the ANC, and Mandela finally walked free from prison after 27 years. Three months later, he led an ANC delegation for face-to-face -face talks with President de Klerk and government officials. Mandela's first year of freedom was spent touring the world in a bid to keep up the pressure against apartheid. Visiting Ireland, he met politicians and those who'd helped campaign for a free South Africa. He was also given the freedom of Dublin City. You have given refuge and aid to so many South Africans. And for this, we are deeply grateful. Mandela's election as ANC president in July 1991, replacing the ailing Oliver Tambo, gave him greater authority to negotiate with the white-led government. In 1993, he won the Nobel Peace Prize with President de Klerk. Although Mandela accused de Klerk's government of not doing enough to stop political and racial violence, he agreed to accept the joint prize as a gesture of reconciliation. Five months later, he was elected President of South Africa. An estimated 23 million people cast their votes during four days of voting in an election hampered by logistical problems, but relatively free of violence. The ANC won just over 62% of the right vote, and, and the country got its first ever South black Africa. head of state. Freedom from want, freedom from hunger, freedom from deprivation, freedom from ignorance, freedom from suppression, and freedom from fear. But that was easier to promise than deliver. He made reconciliation one of the themes of his presidency. 
The hallmark of his crusade was the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which investigated apartheid crimes on both sides of the struggle and tried to heal his country's wounds. During the 1995 Rugby World Cup tournament, he won over many whites when he wore the jersey of South Africa's national team. After divorcing his second wife Winnie, he married Grasha Michelle, the widow of the president of Mozambique, on his 80th birthday in July 1998. Mandela's presidency of South Africa came to an end in 1999. His decision to step down after one five-year term was seen as a shining example to other African leaders who clung to power. But under his successor, Thabo Mbeki, life expectancy fell by 10 years, as the official denial of the cause of AIDS undermined the work done to tackle the condition. Mandela went public in 2005 about his own son's death from the virus in an attempt to challenge the stigma associated with it. The controversial election of Jacob Zuma in 2009 divided the country as well as the ANC, but Mandela stood by his side. After stepping down as president, Nelson Mandela became South Africa's highest profile ambassador, returning to Dublin to open the Special Olympics. The Special Olympics give telling testimony to the indestructibility of the human spirit and of our capacity to overcome hardships and obstacles. Before he retired from public life in 2004, Mandela helped secure the Football World Cup in South Africa in 2010, which gave the country a much needed boost. But for Mandela, it was a heartbreaking mix of celebration and tragedy. On the eve of the competition's opening, his great-granddaughter was killed in a car crash, while one of his last public appearances was at its closing ceremony. In his long life, he witnessed and created history and was central to the shaping of a new South Africa, earning him the title Father of the Nation.